Hello, dear friends. We are allowing a few seconds for you to connect. So welcome to the Digital Ship VPO webinar on a case study on Spire and Vesselbot working together. Very soon you will learn how they are using big weather data with maritime intelligence that ultimately allow to achieve three to 10% fuel savings. We are connected to our guest speakers in Greece and Luxembourg. Let me warm, warmly welcome them. Mark Deveril, Data Operations Manager with Spire Maritime, and Konstantina Komodromos, CEO of uh, Vesselbot. We are thankful to Spire, Space to Cloud and Data Analytics Company for sponsoring this uh, webinar. And before we jump into the actual case study, I'm inviting Carl Jeffries, founding editor of Digital Ship, to share some insights what it can bring for shipping. Let's get started. So I think what we might see today is a vision of what the shipping industry might look like in the future with a lot more optimization around fuel optimization and costs. Got much better prediction of arrival times, much more efficiency, lower CO2, optimization around route, the RPM of the engines and speed, taking into account bunker prices, freights and canal costs. And it's possible with a partnership between two companies, so Spire, which uh, they say the space to cloud data and an analytics company and Vesselbot, which is a maritime AI company. So Spire has a fleet of 100 nano satellites and they can take direct weather measurements. They can uh, take weather measurements in the middle of the ocean, which is something that the meteorological offices don't do. So that's data that other companies don't get. They're based in Luxembourg with offices in the UK, US and Singapore. And the satellites are also recording high frequency AIS data through the satellite of every ship on the planet. So if any ship deviates from where you expect it to be, the, the system can update itself straight away. And Spire is working in partnership with an Athens AI company with deep shipping expertise called Vesselbot. So they're using data and advanced technologies to get a much more comprehensive optimization of the time charter equivalent, which cargo owners and ship owners can sign up to. So the data we're using is uh, vessel performance models, weather data, historical data, alerting when the vessel leaves its expected position, but they're also taking into account real time and past port call durations, knowledge about congestion levels of other ships, the bunker prices, the charter rates and canal costs. So if you put all this together to optimize, you can work out the best speed and RPM setting for the engine at different times, the best place to bunker, whether you want to take advantage of a rising freight rate or a lowering freight rate, so take longer or shorter. You can decide whether to do, use the Suez Canal or go around the Cape of Good Hope, depending on canal prices and fuel prices, you know where the other vessels are being delayed. So first we're gonna hear from Mark Deverill, who's the data operations manager at Spire Maritime based in Luxembourg. He's a former head of data projects with Clarkson's Plateau, Jen Scapen and former. Then we're going to hear from Konstantin Komodromos, who's co-founder and CEO at Vesselbot in Athens. So the presentation should be about 25 minutes and there'll be plenty of time for questions. So you can load up your questions in the Q&A box whenever you like. You can also see other people's questions and upvote the ones you think are most interesting. So I'd like to invite Mark to give his opening talk. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Lyda. So let me quickly share my screen. Okay, so we're gonna quickly talk through the things that Carl's given a great summary of, big data and fuel savings and about spy our time and the weather routine, the expectation versus reality. And that's where Vesselbot's offering comes in. They'll talk about the, uh, the great work they're doing using uh, Spire's data, but also their own intelligence and AI. Did it click on? So we're gonna have a quick opinion poll, which side is going to, to send up, just to see how many people are actually using weather routing already. So please click on the, you should see it pop up. Please click on the answer and we'll give you 30 seconds or so for the answer to come in. And I'll, while we're waiting for that, I will talk about, I'll start things off. So what we're going to get out of this today is the consideration of how the data we have and the intelligence that Vesselbot has can lead into time and fuel management and cost savings. 
And those cost savings obviously lead to emission savings as well, which is a key part of IMO 2020. Fuels so much more expensive now because of the low sulfur, ultra low sulfur requirements. So therefore costs have increased potentially, and you really want to optimize those costs of operations, particularly in challenging markets. That's what Constantine will really bring in the expertise about. And another part of what you can manage is the crew and cargo risk safety when you're considering maritime weather. So we'll talk about the, the data that SPAR has and how it feeds into these things, and then how Vesselbot has realized the value of, of our data and realized the applications that they have. So Zaida, are you ready to present the uh, results of the uh, opinion poll? Yes, we have the results. 42% uh, of our audience said that their business are already using weather routing. 25% uh, replied that they are somewhat using weather routing and 34% uh, says that they are not using it for their business yet. Great, so this, this should be interesting to everybody. Even if you're already using weather routing, you may not be using it uh, in the wider context that Vesselbot can demonstrate. So you're getting some value, but there's further value to be added. If you're not using, hopefully we'll show you today why you should be using it and what you can get out of, the, out of this. So let's talk about Spire before we get on to the, the AI from Vesselbot. Spire is a satellite to cloud analytics company. We're one of the few companies that do an end-to-end -end solution. We design, build our satellites, we manufacture the components, we tune the software, we launch uh, on other people's launch vehicles. We don't have our own rockets. <laughs> we have nano satellites, not rockets. We launch our satellites with, with launch providers. And then we, once they're launched, the story is not over because we're building them for our own service. So we then we operate and manage those satellites. We've designed configurable software payloads so we can update and change our satellites uh, in operation in space. And we've recently done that. We reconfigured 90% of our AS payloads just in three months from December through to February to change uh, so that they were downloading all 27 AS messages, whereas before the older generations had only been downloading the, the, the main messages and not the application specific messages. Now the whole um, constellation is programmed to download everything and we can make other software changes as well. Once we've got the, the data received from the satellites and it, it's a continually growing constellation, it's grown just in the two years I've been with SPAR, we've, we've gone from roughly 60 to 80 to 100 satellites at the end of each year. Uh, and since the beginning of this year, we've gone from 100 to 110 already. Um, so we are continually growing, continually expanding. Our AS uh, message volumes and satellites has uh, got up over 300% in the last two years. Our latency has decreased through configuration of our satellites and our ground stations and optimization and management of our satellites. We've upgraded payloads. We've put new versions of generations of receivers in space. We're continually evolving and improving the, the service that we have. We're then improving the data processing that we had and what we do with the data, the cleansing of the data, the algorithms we use to get the value out of it. We're adding in more machine learning and AI, and some of that is on board satellites, some of it is on, is on ground, all managed by specialist teams who know about the data they're looking at in each of the market sectors, be it maritime, aviation, earth observation, weather. And then we take what we build, so we go from raw satellite data to clean data to smart data, and we deliver it through applications to our customers to get value in their business sectors. And we are one of the largest uh, private satellite constellation operators in the world. So what do we do? We, we build an end-to-end -end solution, all in, all in one solution for maritime data analytics. So that is, as I said, the data we collect and we download, we make it accurate and easy to use. So our APIs um, are standard APIs that you'd be familiar with in any computing environment. We provide sample code, sample programs, 24-7 uh, sales engineering, product support. Um, we also incorporate our maritime weather. So as well as having the most comprehensive AS solution, which will pick up your vessels more often more frequently in more locations so that you can track your own fleet, you can track your competitors' fleet more often. We have Spire Maritime Weather, which is another unique um, service offering from Spire. So based around our own uh, weather forecast model that fuses together other forecast models and puts our own observation data on top of that, we have uh, radio occultation observations, over 10,000 observations a day from our weather receivers, from our 110 satellites. And these observations are consistent coverage of the whole globe. Uh, so not only weather observations from where there are balloons and weather stations, but over the oceans as well. And that's the, the beauty of what we can do with satellites. We can reliably, consistently make observations over the whole globe on land and on water. And the service doesn't degrade. We get a constant level of observation. Uh, for instance, with the COVID change, a lot of weather suppliers were depending on aviation-based um, uh, weather observations. So when the planes stopped flying, 
the weather observations stopped coming in, the weather forecast model was degraded. We immediately went and started providing our radio occultation to more of the weather forecast organizations, which supplemented the missing data and brought the forecasts up to where they should be. We are the only company that has access to our full set of radio occultation data. So we have a unique, a unique edge and accuracy to our own weather forecast model, which also feeds into our maritime uh, weather bundle with the maritime observations, such as the, the wave height and the surface temperature and the, the currents um, and all, all that is uniquely strong in the SPIRE weather offering. And that means basically we have an end-to-end -end service data acquisition aggregation. We provide the, service, the data to you already prepared in a way that you need it for your applications and your market cases to save you money and time and to improve risk and add reliability into operations. Um, and then we're going to head on to weather routing, the expectation. I won't talk too much, but the expectation versus reality, you'll, you'll get that from what Constantine says. There's a lot of people talking about routing. We have predicted routing. We have predicted uh, matching BTAs. We produce ETAs. Um, to compare what the ship's reporting, so you can see the difference in the accuracy and adjust when things are changing. That's just the first part of the equation. So from an operations point of view, you can see whether the ships are on time for the lay dates. You can see whether they're on time for the schedule slots. You can see potentially whether they're going to hit delays. You can look at the uh, location of ships for congestion and all these observations that affect operations. That's put together in a far more comprehensive uh, way by what the robot then does with SPAR data. And that, oh no, sorry, this last slide about the, uh, the the maritime weather bundle. So these are the things that we had in our maritime bundle. So as well as the standard on earth um, weather observations, we had tailored bundles of weather data for the key markets. So the maritime, also aviation and um, agriculture, but the maritime, you see these things. And it's, it, these are unique to SPARS weather model. So because we had the observations over the sea consistently and more than anybody else has, and we build them into our own forecast using our own weather scientists, we have a unique strength in what we can offer. So if you want the the best forecast to make the best operational decisions, you need to come to SPIRE and use SPIRE's weather forecast, the SPIRE's maritime weather bundle, and then you can make the best informed decisions to make the best savings and efficiencies in your own operation planning. And this is why I hand it over to Constantine. Just a minute. Let me know whether my screen came on. Yeah, it's all good. Just make it full screen yep. and we yep. see you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Konstantin Komodromos. Uh, I, I am uh, the CEO and co-founder of Vesselbot. Uh, Vesselbot is a deep technology company with, however, uh, expertise in shipping. And we provide technologies and solutions to the international maritime in the industry. We started off five years ago with one, and our first product was a chartering marketplace. Going onwards, we've had a lot of customers asking us to develop different tools, among which we developed uh, tools for chartering purposes mainly. And lately, the two um, uh, tools that we've developed, were one is the routing and ETA prediction tool, as well as our voyage optimization system, which we'll discuss about today. I'm sure that, you know, in the last, uh, in the last period, the banking prices have grown substantially more than 45% in the last few months. Uh, this is one of the factors that we've seen a lot of entities being pushed about and is pushing the, their uh, profitability and TCs. On the other side, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion around um, EXI, ESG pressure, uh, so Poseidon principles pushing for decarbonization and how the maritime industry will reduce emissions. The specific, this specific reason, so how do we increase our profitability and reduce our GHG emissions was the question we received from one of our uh, customers. And that's how we started developing a holistic solution which factors both commercial as well as operational um, elements and variables into the decision-making process. How should I be operating our vessels was the question from our customer in order to optimize our TC and reduce our GHG emissions. And they set some targets to us. 
we want to increase by X percentage of uh, um, TC, uh, our TC and reduce our GHG emissions by Y percentage. And at the beginning, what we started doing was to look at how uh, things stand today. And the majority, and there were a lot of um, bits and pieces in the market. So there were entities that were providing vessel performance models. There were entities that were providing vessel performance models with weather routing. Um, so we were asked to provide something that would include not only these, but a few steps onwards further to what uh, the current market was offering. So initially we built an AI based model which factors um, historic uh, data of uh, the performance of the vessel in conjunction with weather data, as well as its uh, design and vessel particulars. So we built a vessel specific performance model. We take into consideration the commercial elements of each voyage and we our voyage of AIS data, uh, areas, port, uh, port data, uh, and that's congestion, real time banking data, uh, canal data, higher rates, freight rates, etc. And what it does, it proposes the optimal way and in, in regards, the optimal way to operate the vessel in regards to which route I should be following from A to B, which speed and RPM I should be using in order to operate the vessel, given the constraints we've said before, as well as where to get bunkers en route, and which should be my ETA to arrive at any point of uh, the leg of uh, the voyage. The system thereafter dynamically follows what this, the, the vessel does and recalculates and re-optimizes based on the data that we receive from both Spire as well as uh, the situation in ports, mostly in, in regards to congestion in ports. In order to build our uh, routing system, and which is the basis of uh, the routing, that of the, of the voyage optimization, we've used uh, millions, billions actually of historic waypoints of actual voyages executed in connection with um, bathymetry data, land masses, restrictions in given areas, speed restrictions in given areas, eka seca areas, canals, high risk areas, etc. And we've fused all these and uh, used artificial intelligence and machine learning in order to develop our routing system. The distances and route, uh, routes are offered with very uh, high density and allow us to be very accurate in regards to uh, the way that we propose the voyage optimization to, the, uh, to our users and, and customers. As a result, we can take advantage of the weather uh, system, the weather predictions that are provided by Spire and be able to provide either speed reductions or increases of speed um, or power uh, reduction in order to either avoid, uh, to basically avoid or deviate bad weather conditions and as a result, achieve better results in the uh, optimization of the voyage. We have up to now, based on uh, the average results we've uh, had with uh, our customers, achieved uh, 10 to 15% reduction increase in TC and substantial uh, GHG emission reduction. Uh, thank you very much. That's all from my side as well. Wow, well, that's fantastic. I think any ship owner would like to see 10 to 15% increase in time charter equivalent earnings. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of questions coming in already, but maybe just a warm up from me. Do you want to say where we are in terms of market rollout? Is it something you're developing or do you have customers? We already have a number of customers, both in the dry sector, the container sector, and now moving to the tanker sector. Uh, we are in a number of discussions with a lot of uh, market stakeholders, some big organizations to join the platform as well, and actually running with some big ship managers, some, uh, uh, or are going to run some uh, proof of concept pilot projects 
with them in order to see the value that we can bring to them as well. Um, so the, the, this is not something that we are uh, marketing in regards to will be potentially built. It is something that is already in the marketing and is already bringing benefits to, the, to its users. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, there's an enormous amount of questions about the quality of uh, the weather data from Spire. I don't know, uh, Mark, would you like to, um, I can sort of read, read them out um, <laughs> you, you, if you're still there. So, um, I'm still here. So Jesse Vecchioni is asking, uh, where is your system unique? Because it seems all weather routing companies have what you have to offer. I'll try to answer that in the opening with the data from the middle of the sure. ocean, but maybe you'd like to go into a bit more about that. Vic Shima is asking, how are weather forecasts degraded due to lack of airplane observations? I think you don't use airplane observations, so I shouldn't be asking you a question. Um, no, I did, I did mention it, but I can answer that. <laughs> uh, Jai Key is asking, how far does historical weather data go? Um, anonymous attendee is saying, um, I think that's how is that different to what ABB does? Uh, Dougal Goodman is asking, how far north your satellites go? And uh, maybe we'll stop there. Do you want to have a go? <laughs> Okay, I think, I think I've been there before questions than that. So yeah. there's a question about uniqueness. How is our weather uh, forecast unique? Well, it's unique because we have the radio occultation observation from satellites and we have uh, more, twice as many radio occultation um, samples, readings incorporated into our weather forecast model than any other weather organization. And we have them consistently every day. We then have a maritime uh, weather model that builds off of that and our own forca forecast model that builds off that and a our own model and a fuse model that combines all the major weather forecast models with our own for our own forecasts. Um, in terms of accuracy, I think was one of the questions. We have had um, some reports which have compared our weather forecasts very favorably with other ones uh, in a kind of strength of weakness type analysis. And we're right up there. And I, off the top of my head, cannot remember the name of that study, but I can get you the link if you get the email. Um, if you really want to know the details, you'd be better off to sit down with our weather sales engineers who really, really know this stuff inside out. I focus more on maritime, but there's certainly been published um, studies that, that rate the quality of our, of our uh, forecast model. And they were published in the last few months. Um, and there's been studies come back from the, um, I think a US and a European kind of organization rating the quality of our radio occultation data and the benefit that brings into the weather forecast models. There was a question about airplane, obs airplane observations. I mentioned that. We don't have any airplane observations. A lot of the other uh, weather forecast uh, companies use weather observations from airplanes. So what I said was that when the airplane stopped flying uh, because of COVID and the pandemic hit the world and the aviation market really kind of uh, re reduced in size, there were far less weather observations coming into the other companies' models. So what Spire did was we reached out to them, realizing how important weather forecast is to risk mitigation in so many commercial government personal areas, we reached out and offered these companies our radio occultation data free of charge for many months, and they had now started to fully integrate it into, their, into the weather models. And that was proven to replace the observations coming from aircraft to supplement the, the forecast models and bring that reliability weather, to weather forecasting. And weather forecasting is critical, not just in our time, but, you know, to predicting floods and storms and, you know, risk against personal life. So, you know, we, we, we see the value and importance of maintaining that. And there was a question about how does it compare with your offering from ABB? I must admit, I'm not familiar with the offering from ABB. So I would have to go and find out. The question is something <laughs> different. I don't actually understand what, what, I don't know what TOA means. I don't know if, uh, I tried Googling it, but it didn't help. I don't know if it's time of arrival. Was it a... I, I would assume time of the arrival. I mean, the, the, the time of the arrival or the actual time of the arrival in, in port is something that we monitor. Um, the ETAs is something that ships report through AIS. The predicted ETAs is something that we report and VesselBot report, looking at the ship's position and the route that we would predict from VesselBot's uh, machine learning. And we would say, well, according to the ship's position and the route and the size and type of the ship and the speed it, it operates at, this is when we predict it would arrive at port compared to what it's reporting when it would arrive at port. And you can see the difference, which is quite important operationally. And then the last question that I remember being asked was how far north our satellites go? It's easy, all the way. <laughs> um, we have, um, I think two thirds of our satellites are in some kind of polar orbit and the rest are in a mixture of kind of um, equatorial or ISS type orbits. But I think by far the majority of our satellites are in polar orbits. So we get complete coverage north to south uh, every day. And how, and far, throughout the day. how far back in time does your archive go for JK? That was the other one. Um, 
I actually don't know that. I know we do historic uh, forecast extracts on demand, but I don't know for sure how far the forecast goes back. I mean, I've been with Sparta two years and we've had weather data for more than two years. So I have to assume two years plus, but we would have to get you the answer. If you send your email in, we can get you a detailed answer to that question. Okay, so if we go to Constantine, so there's a four good questions for you. Um, so how do you get information from the ports? I think that comes from Spire, I think. Um, can you say more about your 30% greenhouse gas reduction? I suppose you probably can't. Can you better define the time charter equivalent and what parameters to use in the route selection? I think we covered that, but do you want to uh, give more on those four questions, do you think? Yeah, uh, so ports. Port data, we pick up uh, AIS data from Spire. And then we have our own databases, just special databases where we monitor anchorages and uh, terminals and uh, berths so that we can know what is exactly happening in each of these ports. Um, the next question, where was it? 30% reduction in greenhouse gas seems huge. Can you please elaborate? <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I would be able uh, to have a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting with the gentleman uh, who raised this question. However, just to, to answer it uh, in a, because it is something specific, uh, it does, uh, it, this is an average and it does take into consideration the type of fuel and the type of emissions that each type of fuel um, emits into the environment. And as a result, because we we are reducing emissions, um, excuse me, uh, fuel uh, bunker uh, consumption, because of the way that we operate, the, we suggest the operation of the vessel, we achieve that. But I could share much more in a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, probably with the agent. Mm. I define the TCE. I don't know if he means what is the oh, definition time, of TCE or what definition time, are you using? Time charter equivalent. Uh, this means uh, revenue deducting every expense that you could deduct divided by the days of the, the duration of the voyage. So banker cost, canal cost, um, OPEX cost, uh, know, commissions, all these costs are included in the calculation of the TC uh, divided by the duration of the voyage, total duration of the voyage. And from Jai K, so what parameters are you considered in route selection? So we talked about the bunker price and whether the freight rates going up or down. Mm -hmm. uh, correct, uh, and uh, the weather, which is uh, important as well. So we 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 um, we do want to get to the the fastest route, uh, the shortest route, but you, it doesn't necessarily mean that the shortest route will produce. Uh, the most optimal uh, results for the vessel. So uh, I'll give you an example. When um, vessels consumption increase exponentially from a point onwards and decrease uh, from a point downwards. So there is, there is a sweet spot uh, on the curve of consumption, uh, which based on each uh, vessel size, type, etc., cetera, et cetera, is different. Um, so what we try to do is by building the vessel performance model, we are in a position to choose which is that route that would allow the vessel to optimally sail and reduce punches and on the same time maintain every commercial uh, commercial parameter. Wow, oh, that's amazing. This is a 31 questions. I think that's the most I've ever seen. Maybe we'll take it in terms so you get a chance to get your breath back. Mark, do you want to take some of these uh, sure, sorry, weather me... questions? So the data sample size, um, do you get ocean currents from RO? I don't know, recognized organization. Um, do you have data on significant wave tight? How does a satellite read dew point temperature? Are they questions you can take? They are actually questions that I can't answer, and I would have oh, to right, put okay. you in touch with the specialist <laughs> who, who, who can, who we debated having on today as well. We wanted to minimize the number of people speaking. Um, so within our model, I know that we have sea surface temperature and ocean currents and, this, and the wave height. The wave height, I think we can definitely read from satellites, but I, I really need to put you in touch with somebody who can give you the specialized breakdown far better than I can. Um, in terms of the observations, I just know that we make more observations and it feeds into our model. So please just get in, get in contact with us um, either as feedback on this or by emailing cx at spa.com and we'll get somebody to answer your questions properly. Okay, and uh, WMO data, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a Weather World Meteorological Organization, is it? Uh, do you use? No. Is that... I don't know that we do. 
<laughs> you have your own data. You don't need. <laughs> well, we, we, do, we do incorporate data from other people as well. We have a fused model that incorporates the other uh, models which are public, which are available. And then we, we make our own fused model on top of that. And dew point temperature. I didn't hear you mention dew point. Is that something? Dew point. I will have to get a specialist to answer questions about that. Sorry. Okay. And ocean currents. Is that a. Ocean currents yeah. is part of what we observe and, and put into our models. Yes. Okay. And pre pressure readings? Yes, 100%. That's the oh. whole core of um, radio occultation, I understand. It's looking at the different pressure through the um, level of the observation from the satellite down. That much I do know. Okay. The lowest altitude that radio occultation achieves for weather observations. Hmm. I is... believe that our weather models, and this is um, backed up by the aviation weather model that we have, where I believe we're only one of the few providers that provides observations at all different altitudes up to very high altitude because we provide the turbulence measurements for aviation weather. I believe that's something that we can get from our radio occultation observations. Okay, so Constantine, should we do uh, the next next four? So yes. Utam Kumar is asking about port congestion. So I'm guessing you mean AIS data would tell you where it's congested, and that'll tell you. Um, Bill Brassington is asking about vessels crossing the Pacific. Well, ensuring the route avoids weather system. Maybe he's asking about um, how you collect weather in the middle of the ocean. I guess you do that from satellites. Um, per Nielsen is saying um, we see. Oh, go on. Oh, well, please, 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 and I'll answer afterwards. Oh, I was going to read Pearl per Nielsen. Um, Singapore has not given clear berth planning since September. Vessels are coming in with full speed and only 12, 12 to 24 hours to get a clear picture. How can we avoid that? I guess that's, uh, well, the vessels need to sign up to your service, I suppose. <laughs> Do you want to comment on these top three here? Yep. Uh, so, Mr. Kumar, um, as I mentioned, uh, we monitor both uh, what is happening in the Anchorage and on the terminal level and the breadth level. And as a result, we can predict how much time where you are calling uh, the, the um, mean time that, uh, that you would be requiring in order to wait uh, in the Anchorage. As a result, we provide you with the um, a suggested uh, a new suggestion in regards to the speed that you should be following, and this goes to answer Mr. Nielsen's uh, question as well uh, in regards to uh, which is along the same lines. Um, we are in a position to know, for example, there is a vessel calling from uh, Chidangong, uh, departing Chidangong to to Singapore. And we know that uh, there is a, a given uh, lineup in, uh, in uh, the Anchorage there, and we predict and advise you on whether you should be slowing down a bit uh, in order to not wait, plus not to speed up and end up waiting in the Anchorage where in Singapore there is high co costs in, mm. to, to, to be anchored uh, at the Anchorage in Singapore. So we do this kind of... Uh, optimization in real time in, in, in a dynamic way, enabling our users to, to reduce. Wow, and, uh, and vessel crossing the Pacific, how does your system assist vessels crossing the Pacific? Well, that's the main, that's the whole service, I guess, is uh, about it, weather and everything, isn't it? It, and it factors a lot of uh, the, the inspired, inspired weather data and the way that we pick up the weather data and update our, our route. So this is, that's, that's why I said, there is a, an initial uh, passage plan that is being built via the system and through um, and uh, agreed with the captain and then thereafter that is being updated and en route. So that, uh, that is what is facilitating us to, to provide the routing and avoid bad weather conditions, okay, irrespective so of uh, the area. Okay, so I think the next questions are also for Constantine. So there's two, I think they're roughly about the calibration of your system. How do you know how good it is? I think that's what John is saying. I think um, your, your system is itself a digital twin and that it's a model of what's going on inside a computer, I think. But uh, it's, it's, you can't just predict. You also have to show whether or not your predictions are, are useful or any not. And uh, I think that Rick Schema, how much is whether routing performance improved by using AI? Well, I think you answered that with your 30% carbon savings, isn't it? Do you want to have a go at those two? Okay, so um, uh, in regards to the performance of the model, um, that not here, one is we built it and it's dynamic 
statistically updated. So the model is not something that is studied based on the readings that we receive, either this is from high frequency data from sensors on board or known reports. Um, we are recalculating and uh, updating the model. So uh, one. Uh, on the other side, on, in regards to benchmarking the actual, because we are getting again, the high frequency data and the, or the non report data, we are in a position to understand how the vessel actually performed and in conjunction with weather data that we pick up from Spire, knowing how the, which were the actual uh, weather conditions uh, with high accuracy, we are in a position to benchmark what we proposed, what the vessel actually did and what um, were both the results in regards to consumption, in regards to TCE, et cetera, et cetera. Wow. And um, in terms of reporting from the ship, you're not taking any reporting from the ship, looking at Jess Hurwitz's question. You've got AIS data and weather data. That's all you're using as input, is it? You're not using yeah. any field data? We, 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 as I mentioned, we get uh, data from the vessel. So, oh, right. Okay. Um, uh, either this is high frequency data from sensors or moon reports. So based on these actual data received mm -hmm. from the vessel, Either this is from flow meters or the RPM or the torque meter or whatever that might be, we are in a position to uh, show how the vessel actually performed and what that means to in regards to TC. And taking that into consideration, we can dynamically update as well. So all together, we are recalibrating everything on the go. Okay, should we go back to Mark now so you can have a rest yes. for a few minutes? Can, can I just can I just add a point to one of the earlier questions? If you want to notice the uh, the data around congestion and port activity, but you don't want the full tools and vessel bot, we can also provide that information. Uh, and there's a couple of data stories on the SPAR website about congestion that everybody's seen in the container industry and measuring the time and anchorage and how that's been changing outside the busier ports and the number of vessels in port each time. It's data we have if you want it for an analytical purpose, but you don't want the whole TCE kind of charting benefit um then come to us for that <laughs> okay because so uh, utam is asking how do you differentiate between different ship types and the cargo grades you can see the ship type from AIS if you link it to a well, or something. AIS will give you a generic ship type and then the um, enhanced vessel database that we have which you also provide a vessel bot and the bot had their own information about the commercial types and capabilities of ships as well so we use that information to correctly identify the ships better than is done by just AIS so we can tell you that it's a 300,000 deadweight tanker rather than just a tanker. We can tell you it's a container ship rather than just a cargo ship. And Constantine has the same information plus the owner information as well. And, okay. and, and some terminal information as well. So uh, yep. whether Terminal A deals with uh, crude oil or, uh, 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 or chemical or uh, uh, grains or whatever, we have mapped these into different terminals. Wow, okay, there's a lot of anonymous questions here. We normally have a setting on our Zoom, you can't register anonymously. I don't know quite if we managed to have it turned off by mistake, but um, do you want, uh, Mark, do you want to take these these weather questions? So I don't know what spectrum data is, looking at Wisdom Jabbery's question. Um, Dougal is asking, are you, do you have sea ice cover charts, anonymous we have, attendees? We, we, have, we have sea ice, I know that. I'm not sure about the rest of it. Uh, we have a, uh, WS type service for our weather data to provide it as a, a visual that you can integrate into GIS systems. Uh, we don't include charts, but you can layer other charts with WMS solution. Um, I also saw a question about AIS data. Do we get it all the time? To which the answer is yes, absolutely. <laughs> 160 million messages a day. Um, the, the median refresh time is very, very low in minutes or seconds from terrestrial AIS and from satellite. Globally, the refresh time is very frequent throughout the day as, as well. So we have a continual stream of high volume AIS data coming in. Perhaps it's worth emphasizing because most people understand AIS to be a terrestrial system. So you're taking the AIS data up to your satellite, aren't you? That's so, we're, so we have satellites which are receiving the same AIS message transmissions that ships are making, which are received by terrestrial antenna when they're close to land, but when, when they're out of range of land, they're no longer being received by the land-based antennas. So they have to be received by terrestrial, uh, by, by satellites. We also have a solution called Dynamic AIS, which is where we receive the AIS from about 2,800 vessels operating on the major shipping lanes. And they're very good at picking up um, AS and other ships around them, around kind of 40 kind of mile radius around them in the congested areas where the satellites would only pick up a fraction of the, of the AS data. Because of the way the AS protocol works, satellite, it's impossible for satellites to pick up more than probably 20, 30% of data in the congested areas. So we receive the, the AS from the ships themselves in those areas, which is a, a, another unique part of our AS service, which only SPAR has. And that 
increases our coverage in places like the South China Sea by two to 300% and increases the number of vessels we see each day by about 20%. So it's a very, very good kind of uplift on, our, on an already very good service. Oh, very good. And this question about how it compares to NOAA Copernicus products, I think you've covered that. I mean, being in the mid ocean is one of the big differences, I think, that you have absolutely, that they don't have. Ab absolutely. I mean, I'm not overly familiar with that product. I've heard of it. Um, but yes, our observations are truly global with and um, consistently made all around the world, in, including mid ocean. And that's one of the benefits we had, whereas other people rely on weather balloons and land based stations. Okay, should we go back to Constantine? So these are these top four questions. So how do users understand the different options and can they make their own decision? Um, is your fuel consumption giving you data about individual vessels? Um, are you offering virtual arrival services? I think that's when you say when a ship is going to arrive with the ETA, I think you do. And uh, are you predicting the speed and heading of the vessel? I think that's fairly easy for you to answer those, I think. Yes, uh, the, I'll uh, answer from uh, the latter one. We do, we do predict the speed and we suggest the speed uh, of the vessel as well as the heading. Um, virtual arrival uh, services, I'm not sure what uh, exactly this gentleman uh, or lady is, uh, Vijay, Vijay yeah? uh, means. So I would, I would need some more clarification in regards to that. I don't know what virtual arrival might mean, but I'm not sure what, uh, whether we have the same uh, meaning. Um, so, yeah, give me some clarification, Monda, happy to explain. Uh, we do, in a sense. Um, so, uh, the advice is your platform provider, do you propose several options? We provide, uh, we provide the optimal one. So, our proposal comes with a speed and RPM and drought proposal. So. Uh, that is what uh, what uh, we do. Uh, lot of uh, a lot of questions from anonymous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> per Nielsen is not anonymous, so he's asking more specifically about your port prediction. So you've got a ship in a port. You don't know when its estimated time of departure is. I guess you're taking an average of how long it spends in the port the whole time. Do you want to say a little bit more about how? What kind of data about this port congestion seems to be a lot of interest in that, doesn't it? I think there's, I think your connection's gone, isn't it? Constantine frozen. So we're talking about the, the yeah, payback, yeah. Constantine. You know, uh, uh, I'm back. I'm back. Um, uh, okay, uh, clear question. Uh, per has got a point, uh, but uh, Per allow me to disagree a bit in, in the sense that. AIS data is publicly available and people do use them in all sorts of way, ways. So yeah, it is confidential in a sense, but on the other side, it, these are public information uh, to another sense. Um, as far as what is happening in the ports and how much time we are spending in, in the anchorage then uh, or the berth, um, then we are applying advanced um, statistics uh, and machine learning mechanisms in order to be able to predict what the time there would be. So hmm. um, to a given extent, I do understand your concern, but uh, in a holistic way, um, we do, we do uh, have a high accuracy in regards to predicting both the time there as well as uh, departure times, uh, arrival times, etc. Oh, and this is one about the, the, the choices, because this is often an often issue that comes up. You don't want masters to be told what to do. Masters like to be given options, and these are the advantages. Is that something you're able to do? As I mentioned, we agree the, the route. So we are not here neither to, to instruct anyone, nor to replace anyone, nor mm -hmm. to pretend that we are the single point on Earth that someone uh, could be... Uh, could be basing all their operations on. What we do is we provide a supportive tool to the operations team, as well as the captain, in order to optimize the performance. It is up to each and everyone to decide whether they would like to use it um, uh, totally or uh, reject what we propose and get another proposal or whatever. So it is a matter of, um, understanding in your own organization how you would like to use such a tool or not, or maybe not. I mean, everything is 
on the table as we know is oh and this top question from yes jess hurwitz this is like we were discussing before i'm not personally clear of the definition when you get statistical modeling and when ai starts but uh, jess is asking can you talk about how what's different about this and that is using ai and ml rather than traditional services but i think the traditional service is also using what other people would call ai so i don't know if there's a answer you'd like to give to that one do you think it's so additional services we mean what uh is that well then uh, any other routing service would have some kind of optimization my, in uh, i'll tell you uh, um you know to produce our route we we've used uh, different mod models fishnets uh, uh, markov uh, so di different uh, different uh, uh, t technologies techniques that were used that in order to build different parts of the service. So uh, how, how things are correlated in regard and how um, different variables interact with each other and allow us to predict different outputs is also something that we've used AI. So for example, should, should I be slowing down because there is, um, there is uh, high prices uh, of bankers and at the same time, there are low prices in freight cost or there is congestion in the port and there is in the supply demand equilibrium in different markets is high. So different things, you can't, you can't make a decision by looking at one, uh, one variable. We are looking at different variables in one go, utilizing AI or machine learning, depending on what we try to solve. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Let's try and come up with some questions from Mark. I've been just to see one from Jess asking about, do you have ocean currents at depths? I don't know why you'd want Want that, but, uh... No, we only have surface ocean currents, I believe. Um, a lot of these detailed weather questions, the best thing you can do is to arrange a one-to-one -one consultation with one of our weather specialists. There'll be an email going out after the webinar, and if you reply to that, then we'll happily give you time with somebody who can answer the questions to, <laughs> to a more detailed level than I can, I'm afraid. Oh, no, that's great. I think all these questions are all for Constantine, all the ones I can see, but I, I can't actually understand all of them i mean about the, the sort of freedoms that shipping have to follow follow choices i, I guess that's the uh, the practical use of this in the maritime industry i guess people are thinking carefully about how how people use this stuff don't they i suppose i, I don't know is that that seems to be the, the sort of draft of the fuck two questions uh carl uh even today um let's say let's say you have um you, you uh, the, the industry uses uh, certain services for routing okay uh, there are known brands out there. Even today, when when this happens, there is a, an application on board where people, uh, the the crew on board, gets the proposals and can agree or disagree. Well, with weather routing services, this this is the same. So we are no different in that sense. Exactly the same and the same principle being applied. And the way we approach things is we give the liberty to anyone to either follow or not follow what we suggest. Yeah, do you get Bill Brass oh, sure. Bill, Bill Brassington says, do you get feedback from vessels about whether they act on your advice or not? <laughs> do, you, uh, do, you, do, you, do you get to know if vessels follow you? We know that. We, we, mm -hmm. we know that. As I mentioned, we follow what they do <laughs> and not. So there is a our initial plan, our um, on-the-go plan, and what the vessel actually does. So there are three things that we uh, we provide to the user so that they know whether the crew on board or the operations team is following or not, and why they are diverting or not. Wow. Uh, I think you had a sense before we started, there'd be lots of questions from competitors. I think that's <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> seems to be what's going on here. Um, so uh, maybe come back to Mark. So questions from Lenart. Um, is the weather data better in that you get a much more forecasting ahead of time or better in, re in respect to the analysis? But I would say the answer I, is uh, both of those, if, you, if it's better weather data. Is. I, I, think, I think to be fair, we've just extended our forecast to go up to 10 days in, ahead, which I think is... Um, Probably not truly unique, but not everybody does it. Um, it's better in terms of the accuracy of the forecast. Um, so the prediction that we, the forecast we make is more accurate than some of the other forecasts which you can buy. So if you want the most accurate, most reliable weather forecast, um, then I'd come to spy. Simple as that. It's the, it's the quality rather than how far ahead you go. 
but we do go far ahead and it's very granular as well which um, reduced the frequency of reporting so it's more frequent for up to five days now and then we've extended it seven days to ten days in the last few months i believe yeah i think all the other questions about for constantine there's one i can see from jesper deeds about something the c state prediction quality that may be a bit too technical is that a Mark Stroper right that, at the bottom that, is asking about ICE data. You said that's already available, I think. I, and I may have been jumping the gun on that. I think it's been discussed. Um, again, for those kind of details, make an make a appointment for one-to-one -one consultation with the weather specialist engineers, and they'll give you the, the detailed breakdown. Okay. And uh, yeah, Leonard is asking, please send the articles you mentioned about the weather data quality. We've got a chance to write to the audience afterwards. So if there's something we're able to send there, that would be... Absolutely. I'll tell the marketing people to send, send that link. It should be easy to find on the SPAR website, but I'll get them to incorporate it in the response. Okay. So if we go back to Constantine, so, um, oh, crikey, here's another one. Got to the top of the list. How quickly can you generate a reliable speed and consumption pair for a charter who needs to understand the FOC? I don't know what that means. For a vessel commercially available, well, I guess well, it's for... Do you want to take that one? Sure, okay. consumption. Mr. Oh, right. Peter, thank you for the question. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite sure that oh. you do you do try to do some of these things as, uh, yourself. <laughs> uh, to, how quickly? Very quickly. Matter of minutes. So uh, we factor all these in matter of minutes. Well, and this one about are you doing models for individual vessels or for a, yes this second. as i mentioned we build vessel specific models we utilize historic data and along weather particulars uh, the hull the design the, 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 the um, engine the propeller all these things and we build a model for each vessel okay and is the route recommendation is totally generated by computer or do you have people also adding input as well? No, it is completely generated by a computer, a system, an algorithm. Okay, so this question at the top, like Cor Gus asking, I did not catch what is the learning machine. So I think um, he's asking about which is the element of the computer learning. So I guess you're automating, you're improving your models the whole time. I think that's the answer to that, is it? Uh, um, uh, Assuming that was the question, uh, Carl, yeah, um, we, we, we constantly pick up data and enhance uh, based on uh, new data we receive both on the vessel side as well as the market uh, model side. So it's two things, uh, two different things. Okay, so this question um, next, so about the uh, time of arrival, this is always difficult for captains. I think that's more of a comment about how difficult it is to predict you know, coming, the second one's a comment, autumn speed might conflict with a tendering notice of readiness. How does vessel bot integrate this? I don't think you get into the sort of charter relationships. It's just analytics really, isn't it? Maybe and then the next one is a certain weather variables which are more influencing than others. Do you want to, I don't know which of those you'd like to, we've got about seven minutes left now, is it? Um, um, so from, from starting from, uh, the time of arrival with uh, the captains, um, as I mentioned, we use different, different, uh, different models and data in order to be able to predict which should be the optimal time of arrival at the port, and as a result, uh, all the rest come uh, into play. Um, as far as the optimal speed is concerned, um, we are not. I don't remember the question, the optimal speed, what it was. Oh. Uh, you moved it a bit faster. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I don't, I don't remember either, <laughs> to be no, honest. No, 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 I'll find it. <laughs> optimal speed might conflict with tendering notice of readiness. Okay, um, okay. so, um, yeah. Therefore, we factor different parts in that sense, but we don't factor notice of readiness. What we try to do is to fulfill any commercial requirements based on the CP, on the charter party. That means that if you have a LECAN, we satisfy the LECAN, so the proposal takes into consideration the LECAN, or uh, speed clauses or uh, any other clause or working hours uh, in ports, etc., etc. So. All these are factored into the decision-making process, and we suggest to do. 
it is as if an operations person does different calculations in order to liaise with the captain and agree the, the voyage plan. Yeah. Oh, are there certain weather yeah. variables that turn out to influence fuel consumption more than us? I guess it's wave height and wind, I suppose. Is that, so maybe that for Mark, or I don't know who's that. Wave height, current, wind, I would imagine, and obviously storms as well. Um, I, can also an I can see an interesting question from Per Nielsen, who's saying, uh, if we have an overlay in our system, can you see where, where this will be in a six, say, four days, and how the weather is at that time? So yes, you can certainly use the predicted route, which is the positions where this is going to be, use the speed to predict where on the route is going to be, and then use a full weather forecast or a point weather forecast to say, okay, what's the weather going to be at those positions? And then you can make the speed decision to say, do you want to be in front or behind of, of the weather accordingly? So you can definitely do that with the spire products, and obviously it's then taken to another level with what Vesselbot did. But yes, that's that's the one of the ideal kind of the use cases for our, our offerings. So thanks for asking that, Pierre. Get in touch. We'll show you how it works. Yeah, there's some more, oh, a lot, lot more weather questions further down in the list. We've only got a couple of minutes left now, but uh, um, you've got a question about which model do you use for the current? Do you take into account gusts? Do you produce ensemble models? I don't know where they are. Okay. Uh, so our ensemble, I think, is a consolidated model. Which yes, we yes we do. Uh, which models we use? For which particular things? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to give my my stock answer. Schedule a call with a specialist. They'll give you that level of detail. Oh, we factor we factor many of these elements uh, into our models, uh, Carl, as well. Wave direction, uh, wave speed, wind direction, wind speed, uh, currents. Uh, well, uh, all these things uh, are factored into our decision-making process mm. as well. Wow, oh, and there's a very easy question at the top. How do you send the route recommendation? How are you actually communicating to the ships? Uh, a number of ways. So email and different ways. We, we, we provide different options to, to our users. Oh, and do, do you, how often do you send the recommendations to the wrestles? Is it, uh, Depends. Depends on a number of factors. Depends uh, if there are significant uh, variations from the initial plan. We don't want to to in, um, create unrest to the crew on board unless there is some actual uh, need. So based on what uh, we are being told, there's something significant. Uh, we tell or make it. A, a, this is ad hoc. If I may so say so. Oh, oh, well, that's fantastic. Well, we'll just, uh, I think, I think, I don't know if the, 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 just who it's uh, the data conflicts with the noonday report. I suppose it's more of an operational issue. Um, Nicolaus yeah. is. If I, can, if I can comment on that, I've, I've done work in the past comparing the noon, the noon reports with the uh, predicted ETAs and routing calculations. And um, there's definitely an advantage in using something other than noon reports a lot of the time, which are obviously <laughs> only updated once a day as well. Uh, definitely, when you can get uh, high frequency data, and there are different options in that respect. Uh, currently, there are much more data that you can rely on in order to to base uh, mm. either models or whichever that might be. Do you think we have enough data? Just last question, from Nicolaus. Um, do you have uh, the data to get the precision of the model that you need? Is it? Uh, we don't just use uh, we don't just use AI. Uh, AIS data. We use different different technologies uh, apart from AIS. So we have a lot of data from Spire, which <laughs> did provide us with a lot of data, uh, both historic as well as current, mm -hmm. uh, on AIS data with frequent waypoints and coverage. But also we complement this data with other with technologies that enable us to have dense data to build the routing system. Wow, well, that's fantastic. Well, we're coming to the end of the hour. That's uh, 68 questions. I think that's a digital ship record. There's a couple more, but I think maybe we'll pass back to Vida for the closing words. But thank you very much, everybody. That was fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Carl. So I observed that we were a nice group of 170 people connected live from various places. Thank you very much for sparing this hour to learn something new and ask uh, so many questions. Uh, next week, we are hosting two webinars at our regular time, 10 a.m. Uh, in London. Join us on Tuesday, where we will continue on weather routing theme. And on Thursday, we'll get into technical aspects of maritime standard ship decks. Now, Digital Ship is signing off. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.